Alright guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go on an email that was sent from a subscriber. That's my guy, he is 41 years old, he's from over in the UK, he is a husband and father, and he's writing in really looking for our help. So this is going to be some serious audience participation today. Not that there always isn't audience participation, but really, I need your help. You see, four years ago, this guy's life turned upside down when his seven-year-old son was diagnosed with leukemia. And since then, as you can imagine, his life has been very tough. Not long ago, he found out that his wife, who's been full-on mama bear protective mode of their son, has been having a year-long emotional affair. Emotional at the, at, at the very least, if not something physical. And as you can imagine, this guy's heartbroken and shocked over this whole thing because prior to all this, with his son being diagnosed, it seemed like they had a really happy family and had, had a great history with her, her family, everything. Stars were lying. And now this guy is really wondering what to do. On the one hand, obviously, he's a, a, a watcher of this channel and knows what to do. But there's the problem with his son. He doesn't want his son to get worse and all that. And wonders if maybe he was too withdrawn during this whole thing. All sorts of things here. So I'm going to go through this story. And as you can see, it's a long one. In the hopes that we can really help this guy out. So we're going to go through his history with her and all that. It is pretty interesting. I will say that. And how this guy really has been incredibly strong. Being there for his boy. Because I can't imagine what it's like to have your child he loves so much. And finally this happens. And we'll do anything to protect your child and be strong for the family and all that and then find out this from his wife well he found out some way and you know what's going on here so definitely guys this is a call to action needing your help here so hopefully we can help this guy out at the end of the story here and he can make the rest what is the best decision for himself this is dear ssm a big fan here a long time watcher your videos this is my brother recommended you well shout out to your brother i really need your urgent perspective on this one Okay. Well, this is a call to action, gentlemen. This is audience participation day. We need your help. I'm 41 years old from England, and I'm what people call an x ennial part Gen X, part Millennial. And I've been described by some as a Sigma male. From young age, I've always had an approach of wanting to understand the logic or science behind things, including people. <laughs> I've always been the same way too, man. When it comes to women... I didn't just take into account my own experiences. I was always observant of my friends' relationships, how they handle certain situations, how the relationships ended, and how both sides would react. Well, that's smart. Learn from other people's successes and failures. I usually know what advice you're going to give before you say it, but I could use some input from you and our community. Because of this, I had a very little interest in marriage and kids until I met her. Well, isn't that usually how it works? A lot of guys have no interest in marriage or kids until they meet that girl. Here's a little background on, on uh, how she, let's call her Christina, and I got together. Maybe there are some lessons in here that our younger members may find helpful. Uh, we met whilst working on a cruise ship. We started on the same day, different departments though. I was 22, she was 25. We ended up walking next to each other whilst being given the safety tour around the ship with all other new joiners that struck up a conversation. She was petite, blonde, Eastern European, and smoking hot. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure you knows that part. I'm not very good looking, so assume she wouldn't be interested in that way, but still chatted with her like normal. Okay, so in other words, you treated her like any other chick. Probably most guys are kissing her ass all the time, so that probably piqued her interest. When I want to be, I can be a social person and can chat to anyone. Very often, because I seem comfortable and friendly, I've been told I flirt, whereas I just see it as talking, making jokes, and being friendly in general. Funnily enough, if someone told me to go and flirt with a girl or chat them up, I wouldn't have a clue on what to do. Well, I'm sure your British accent certainly helps, man. Man, I'd kill for a British accent. But then again, I'm American, so I guess I can go someplace and have my American accent. But since probably most people in the world want to smack Americans, that probably wouldn't help me too much. Uh, so, and after safely briefing, we parted ways with a casual see you, see you around. Now, one thing people may not know about cruise ships is that the, the liveliest bar on board is always the crew bar. It was very much a work hard, play hard mentality when you're on board. I've been on a lot of cruises, man, particularly when I was younger. My parents liked going on cruises. They were awesome. 
the best cruise I ever went on was an Alaska cruise like 20 some years ago. Holy crap, that was awesome. And I always figured the freaking crew members were all hooking up with each other, just like in restaurants. Most of the departments in the cruise ship mingle with each other in the crew bar, including Christina's and mine. We started hanging out, and the chemistry seemed to be building, but I wasn't going to rush into it. I wanted to be sure I wasn't just imagining it either. No need to rush. What? Why would there be a rush? But remember, you said smoking hot blonde. She's used to guys rushing. Think about it. Guy gets a pretty girl's attention. They're going to do anything. They try to lock her down. You were just taking your time. Could really didn't care less. You're indifferent. And you had your fucking British accent. This went on for a few months. I got to know her better. She was very feminine, had traditional values, very close to her family, and our morals aligned on many things. And she seemed to want a man who would be the leader in the relationship. Ah, traditional girl. Thank the Lord. We sometimes hang out, just the two of us, and we joke about differences in our languages and cultures. I'd help her better understand lyrics to songs that she liked. I'd introduce her to movies or TV series I thought she'd enjoy. Mostly hits, few misses. She liked the airplane movies. Another thing some may not know is that there is one place in the ship that is not lit up at night, which is the crew deck. It's usually at the front of the ship, and it's pitch black And when you first step onto it, but that, that is a fantastic area for stargazing. Uh, newsflash, people know. When I was 17 on a, how old was I? 17 on a cruise ship in 1995. Where do you think I went to make out with chicks? The front of the ship, the, the, the top, not the crew deck, but the, the decks nearby, which was as dark as possible so nobody can, you know, see us stargazing. From the middle of the ocean with no lights around you, you would have the most amazing view of the Milky Way. There'd be shooting stars, the planets, it's truly breathtaking. I would quite often duck away from the crew bar myself with a couple of drinks and just go sit there, taking the mass of the universe and ponder our existence. Maybe a bit geeky, but I loved it. Bro, that sounds awesome. <clears throat> I've seen such amazing views on cruise ships in the middle of the fucking ocean at night. It's awesome. Uh, one evening, I went to dock, duck out, and Christina ran over to me asking where I was going. I told her, and she asked if she could join me, and I said sure. She was awestruck by the sky and the stars and wanted to stay as long as possible with me, but after a little time, she started to get cold. Yeah, that old excuse. So I am cuddling for warmth. Then she turned and kissed me. Yeah, the old I'm cold thing, huh? At that exact moment, a meteor shot across the sky and burned up in the atmosphere, which lit up the entire sky until emerald green for a few seconds. Oh, for goodness sake. You're acting like this is a rom-com. It was a sign from the heavens. <clears throat> as for our first kisses go, I'd say that it was pretty high on the romance scale. We ended up staying there a while longer, only kissing. Yeah, sure. That's that, Yeah, and just like me, I only kissed. The next evening in the crew bar, I was getting a drink when Christina came in and asked to chat, and I said sure. She said she enjoyed last night, but that she thought it would be best if we remained friends. <laughs> I guess you weren't as good of a kiss as you thought you were. I guess that meteor going across the sky didn't mean what you thought it meant. I was incredibly casual in my response of, sure, no problem, all good. I then high-fived her, and she saw me walk back into the group I was drinking with, and during which two of the female youth workers had joined while I was away, both of them jumped over and gave me big hugs to say hello. I'm assuming she saw that too, but I wasn't looking. So, essentially, she friends, friend zones him after the makeout session, and this guy's indifferent and can care less. He's like, okay, no problem, and he goes off, and he has two other female crew mem members giving him attention. That, and she's probably like, what? What? Sure enough, we stayed friends for a couple months, but still we had a bit of flirting going on back and forth. Uh, one incident that springs to mind is when mine and her department were having a quarter party. People just sitting in the corner outside their cabins, listening to music, drinking, and chatting. Christine and I were talking, and somehow the subject of how fast I could run came up. And she jumped up and said, you couldn't catch me. I gave her a second to think I, was, I wasn't moving, and then sprung up after her. But on my hands and knees, she screamed and ran, but of course, I caught her. She wanted to get caught. As I caught her, I grabbed her waist, and she came down to the ground, and I caught her in my arms and the floor to prevent injury. Our faces were incredibly close at this point, but our eyes locked. We, st we stayed like this for a few seconds before I said, This would probably be a really nice time for you to kiss, to kiss you. But friends don't do that, and got up and walked back to the rest of the group. <laughs> Again, she's probably like, What? Not long after that, maybe a few nights later, she asked me to walk with her back to her cabin, 
and the moment we were alone, she threw herself at me. Suffice to say, she didn't just want to be friends anymore. There you go. What I like about this guy is that the whole time he's indifferent. Whatever. I'm on the cruise. I'm doing my job. There's other girls that like me. Whatever. Now, relationships on board are very common, and they move at a, such a fast pace. A girl and a guy could be dating for a couple weeks, and they both be with somebody else the next month, and it was nothing unusual. That's what I figured. It's like restaurants. However, Christine and I stayed together. We stayed a, stayed a, a couple on board for about three years. We became a bit of a, a golden couple among the crew and even some of the passengers at times. During the three years, we met each other's parents. My parents loved her, and her parents loved me. It was ideal as her parents didn't speak a word of English, so I couldn't understand all the BS I said. During our time off, we sometimes stayed in her country, other times in mine. Sure, we had our occasional disagreements and shit tests over that time. Oh, of course you're going to get shit tests from her. She was shit testing you when you were first friends back then. As you said, she's a smoking hot feminine woman. This is going to happen. Most of the time when she did this, I would just get up and walk away from her. It would soon be resolved after that. I would honestly say about 99% of her relationship was good. Okay, those are pretty good odds. After three years on ships, we decided it was time to make a go of it on land, and we decided to build a life in England. We've been sharing a cabin for about two years, so we knew what to expect living together. It was hard to readjust for both of us, but we made it work. We shared a place with my brother and his wife for a little while until we got our own place. We discussed marriage, but I always maintain it would be when I'm ready. Good. Very good. Things were good overall, and so after another four years, together for seven years in total, I popped the question and we got married in 2012. <clears throat> in 2013, our son was born. Congratulations, Dad. Raising him had his stresses on both of us, but we made it work and things were still good overall. In June 2020, as COVID was in full flow, our son was diagnosed with leukemia. <sighs> Shit, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you, I'm sorry for your wife, and I'm sorry for your boy. But you're a strong guy, stronger than you, and your, your, your strength's about to be tested. On his seventh birthday, he was checked into the Royal Marsden, which is a specialist cancer hospital in London. Usually the first few weeks of treatment are the most intense, and both parents are allowed to be there the whole time. However, because of the COVID rules, only one parent was allowed to stay with him, the other was not permitted in the hospital. Christina was adamant that she'd be staying with him. The mother bear really came out during this time. I can understand. Seven years old, her baby boy, her only child, and diagnosed with leukemia. And during 2020, with all the uncertainty with regards to COVID in the world, yeah. The hospital said that we would be allowed to swap a week at a time. She stays with him for one week and me the next. But again, Christina was adamant that she would be, wouldn't be leaving our son. As much as I wanted to be there for him, I knew our son was in the best hands possible with his mother. She learned, she learned so much during those three weeks about the, the chemo that he'll be taking, the side effects, what to do in certain situations, and how to handle certain things. She has a wealth of knowledge on this cancer when she came out. What followed was an incredibly stressful and heart-wrenching three and a half years. Sir, I can only imagine. I'm not a parent. I have no idea what it's like to raise a child, to have that love for your child. The only thing close that I know of is having kittens and raising them to adulthood and then seeing the poor babies get sick and doing everything I can. That was the only thing remotely close I could possibly comprehend, and it's heartbreaking. You know, so I'm sure you and your wife will do anything to take care of your boy. Will do any and and every moment of every day must be an incredible stress, like you wouldn't believe. And that uh, you know, and your levels of strength and hers tested to whole new levels. <clears throat> this is not easy, and no one would ever expect it to be easy. And you have to do you can be strong for her, yourself, and your boy. Christina became my son's caretaker, and I did what I thought a husband and father should do by working to ensure the bills were paid, a roof over her heads, and food was on the table. I wanted to provide everything I could. You were, inst you were an autopilot instinctively going into man mode. She's in woman mode, mom mode, protecting the kid, and you're in father 
husband man mode providing. The bill's got to be paid. End of freaking story. And I'm sure being in man mode providing and she's in mom mode caretaking, you stop having time for each other. Which happens. We dealt with our son's treatment in different ways. I admit I became more solitary while she wanted more emotional support. The good news is that the chemo was very successful. He ended his treatment and rang the bell in November last year. That's wonderful, man. I'm so happy to hear that. It was not easy for any of us. It tested us and strained our relationship. But we made it through, and I thought Christine and I would begin to slowly heal and start growing closer again. That was until last Sunday. Holy shit, this is recent. When I found out that she had been emotionally cheating for over a year. I found her well-hidden messages and was piercing it all together all night. She was very clever with it. She used social media, a social media messaging app. I'm not on social media. And she had the name saved as one of her girlfriend's second phone number. All the messages were in her native language. <sighs> she is slick. It was up. I was up all night photographing the messages and translating them. There's a lot of deleted messages, but they clearly state their intimacy and feelings for each other. My so guys, during this whole time, the worst time of his life, to his boy, his boy, the leukemia, and this guy is doing whatever he can every minute of every day to stay strong for his family, his wife, his son, oh yeah, himself, and provide. I'm sure every morning this guy woke up and probably didn't want to come get out of bed because he just felt like overwhelmed, depressed, hurt, and all that. But got up anyway, did what he had to do. And yes, he may withdraw. And then after all this, the boy, like he said, uh, you know, his treatment ended, things are going well, and finds out that his wife's fucking cheating on him. No goddamn excuse for him. I don't care. Did this guy seek comfort elsewhere? Obviously not. She couldn't keep it together. Um, what else? It turns out it was an old friend from her country. They never had anything previously. They used to hang out as kids with her sisters and friends as a group. Uh-huh. I know about him being a friend, as she had mentioned him as well in a casual conversation. I deduced that they were they had shared intimate pictures with each other, as there were some messages which were deleted, but they had particular smiley face reactions after it. Yeah, I don't think they were showing cat and puppy pictures. It appeared they had met up when she visited her country last year due to some messages along the lines of, Where are you? In the car and five minutes away, see you then. She also had things written on her phone's notepad of things that she wanted for herself in the future, many about being with him. I confronted her on Monday afternoon when she got home. I decided to record it as I didn't know how she'd react. Very smart, man. Well, I think we can all guess how she's going to react. The fucking waterworks. And the... You weren't there for me, and blah, 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 and crying and excuses and all that. And sure, she was going through a hard, stressful time. I can appreciate that. But you didn't go up seeking comfort for some other chick. I said his name, and she seemed confused. I told her to give me her phone, and she did. I pulled the messages and pushed the phone back across the table to her. To her credit, she has a very good poker face. No tears, no going pale, but I can see her eyes going in all directions trying to think. They're great actresses, or they had the capability of being great actresses. She said they were just harmless messing around texts. Oh, here we go, trickle truth. Well, no, actually, that's not truth at all. They weren't harmless texts. I read some of the translations for the more intimate ones. She just said, oh, and stayed quiet. I then asked her about the notes. Again, she stayed quiet, not reacting. I didn't get much out of her at this time, so I simply took off my wedding ring and said, I guess this is how it ends, and left the ring on the table and left the house. There you go. Just like back years ago when he just walked away when she's like, I think we should be friends. Okay. And he walked away. I went walking and decided to call my mom. I asked her to meet me at the coffee shop and told her what happened. She was devastated just as I was. Not just for me, but for my son. He's been through so much at such a young age, and now he's going to deal with his parents divorcing. Here we are at the main issue here. Everything you can to protect your boy. Yes, your son has been through hell. And I bet your boy is as tough as nails. You know, you, you hear these stories or see, you know, like sometimes, 
Well, okay, you hear these stories about these kids at a young age, and they're diagnosed with cancer, leukemia, any, any number of things. And these kids are just so mature for their age, and they're so strong. It's just truly amazing. I got to tell you, if I was super rich, I would be, if I was a freaking like celebrity, you know, or a, or an athlete, I'd be going to hospitals all the time with these, these kids and donating money and all that. These kids are amazing. After finishing with my mom, I decided to meet up with my brother to speak to him about it. We went through our local, our logical steps and deductions in true SSM style. Once I got home, Christina asked if we could talk. Oh, what do you want to talk about, honey? <clears throat> she explained that she started out just speaking to him about our son's treatment as an old friend, and she didn't realize it was going that far. But it was nice having someone listening to her and caring about how she feels. Um, you couldn't talk to me? You think I didn't care about how you felt? Now, yes, this guy was going in father, husband, protector mode, making sure bills were paid, working the extra shifts, whatever he was doing to take care, because you got to have fucking money. Obviously, she wasn't working. She was with the boy around the clock. But if she told the husband here and communicated him in a way he understood, not dropping hints, he would have been there for her. That was something that she had been able to do with me for so long since I became more solitary. She said that nothing had happened with him physically and that no intimate pictures were shared. I questioned this and she said that she understood how it looks with the delayed pictures and smiley faces, but it was just simple selfies. Bullshit. I'm not buying this malarkey first. I haven't used the word malarkey in a long time. Malarkey. Let's keep the word alive in a long time. Give me a fucking break. No. Uh uh. A year. She's talking to this guy. Emotional affair. Deleting all the evidence. If it was no big deal, why, why delete a selfie for Christ's sake? Really? Meeting up with him? Uh uh. Their plans and all that? Were you doing that? Were you secretly meeting with, with, with a. A, 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 a check in London or wherever you are in England? No. I asked her why she deleted them, and she said because she knew it was wrong. I asked her about meeting, meeting up with him, and she said they met up when she visited him, uh, him and her and her sisters at their mother's house, and it was just catching up and having a coffee. Oh, is that what they call it in her part of the world, having a coffee? He's a plumber, and he also helps one of his sisters with an apartment when she asks. She said even if she wanted to do something with him, she wouldn't be able to because her mother and sisters wouldn't allow it. Oh, for God's sakes, you tell me in her country they don't have fucking hotels. I kind of believe that as they, as they are proper old school traditional Eastern European girls, but as you, as you can never be certain. Um, let's go back to that proper old school traditional European girls. Um, last time I checked, around the world, men are men, women are women. We all respond to and do the same fucking things. And guess what? Women cheat in Eastern Europe as they do in East L.A. Come on here. I told her this is unforgivable and we'll be looking at divorcing. It was at this point that the tears started to come down her face. And she said she understood and went to the living room to cry alone. And the Golden Globe goes to Christina for the biggest crybaby fest bullshit we barely spoke for the rest of the night, but but uh, put on a front for my son when he came home from school. Good. Man, your son's back in school. That's great. We barely spoke for the rest of the night, blah, blah, blah. And before the evening was up, I told her to get some covers because uh, we will never be sharing a bed again, and she can sleep on the couch. She didn't argue. Good. Your son might be like, why is, why is mummy sleeping on the couch? Never mind, son. Never mind. I won't lie. I had my times that night where I let the tears out. I've always lived by the mentality that I'm here with her because I want to be, not because I have to be with her. Well, that's good. That's a good way to go. Even then, it still hurts to be betrayed and know that I'm going to have to tell my son that everything is going to change again after everything he's been through. Next morning, I went to action mode. I ordered an STD test. I went online to the government website and filed for divorce. One good thing about the UK is divorce is pretty simple. There is no alimony. Childcare costs can be worked out through with with or without worked out without lawyers, and you don't even need both parties to agree. If one of you wants to divorce, it can go through. Holy shit! I was not aware of that. no alimony, and you can work things out. And if one person, wow. Okay. We still rent, so there's no housing issues to discuss, and we've always kept separate bank accounts at my insistence. 
Good for you, sir. I haven't finalized the divorce as it has been, has an expensive administration fee, so I'll do it at the end of the month when I get paid. I decided to briefly speak to Christina, and I asked her if her family knew. She said no because she was too ashamed to tell them. Well, that well, there you go. If she's too ashamed to tell them what's going on, then obviously something not good is going on. I told her she had better tell them or I will. I also told her that she has two choices. We cancel the tenancy agreement on this apartment and both look for somewhere to live, or I will take on the agreement for this apartment. She can't afford it on her own, and she moves out. This will be much less disruptive to our son for the process. I can see her heart sink, and she said she couldn't leave our son. I explained that with 50% custody, she'll be seeing him less anyway. This way would be less interrupted to him. Well, she should have thought about this before spending an entire year having an emotional affair with the dude back home and going to see him and exchanging deleted things that we all know darn well she was selling pictures of her cougar pussy. No, 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 no. Uh, she should have thought about that back then. And I don't want to hear that she was in a bad place and you couldn't talk to you and all. I'm sure she was in a bad place. It's heartbreaking a child leukemia or, or having a, a disease. But still... You didn't do that. She teared up and said she understood and walked away. Later that evening, she told me she had she told her family everything. And they said they were ashamed of her and they never want to see her again. Flip a coin whether that's true or not. I like to say it felt good seeing her world falling apart, but it didn't. I had a feeling you were gonna say that. Knowing that she's been cast out by her family and will be my and will be my friends and family, the girl who came with me to England with nothing, who left her family back in the country to start life with me. I take no pride in seeing her like this. Truth be told, it still breaks my heart. But then I read the messages again, and it returns to anger. Yeah, every time you might feel yourself slipping, man, read those messages. She is a grown-ass adult, <clears throat> and she made those choices. There are consequences to actions here. I guess she was hurting. Because of your son. And maybe she wanted an escape to get away from your very tough reality. But your son couldn't escape. You couldn't escape. So what gives her a fucking pass? The following day, with the help of a translator app, I wrote them a message to her mother to thank her for all her love and support over the 18 years that Christine and I were together. <clears throat> That's a long time, my man. Her mother's reply had me in tears, how she saw me as a son, how ashamed she is of her daughter, and how heartbroken she was all by all this. I also received messages from her sisters saying how sorry they were that all this happened and that they had no idea. They made zero excuses for Christina and no attempts to discuss us reconciling. Wow. That is rare. Usually it's, you know, if this, if, if this was America and you reached out to a family, they would be trying to convince you to take her back. They'd be using your son's when he had having leukemia and <clears throat> as an excuse to take her back or shaming you or saying you closed yourself off. This is rare. I decided to message each of them separately about when Christina and him were over their mothers for that coffee. Their stories lined up with what Christina had said, how he came up to their apartment and joined them for coffee and chat and then left. Christina was never alone with him. My first judgment of them being physically together may have been wrong. Since then, I've had talks with Christina in the evening after my son was asleep, and she has maintained that it was only messages, nothing further. She said they were never intimate pictures sent, just silly selfies. She admitted that it was wrong, but she needed to feel and give some kind of love she hadn't been able to give or receive from me for so long. As I said, is it possible to salvage this? Am I wrong for wondering if I should try? I know we say once a cheater, always a cheater. We also say every situation is different. I tell myself no. I would always question who she's speaking to on the phone, who she's texting, who she's seeing, if she ever went back to visit her country. The foundation of a marriage may be trust. Without it, you cannot have one. But I know I'm partly to blame for shutting her out emotionally, and she admits that she did not give her, did not give her the right to send those messages, and has said that if she has to sleep on the couch for the rest of her life to show me how much she wants us to be together, she will fat chance on that dude. Before the leukemia, she never had any red flags. I had zero reason to doubt her loyalty. She was a beautiful soul. Did I ruin her by shutting her out and sabotaging this? Should I let her marriage be the true victim of the leukemia? So, long one. I know you guys have been typing away and I know you're dying to type away now after 
sitting on the edge of your seats waiting for what I'm going to fucking say here. Well, I'm going to say this again. Here's the preamble here. I don't know what it's like to have a child, let alone a, a sick child. But God damn, that must tear you apart. I'm sure every mo moment of your lives since the diagnosis and still wondering if it will come back or anything like that has been hell. You went and you did you who went to autopilot in the man mode, the father protector mode, making sure bills were paid no matter what. And you took care of your family how you knew. And she went to mama bear mother role, protecting your son, staying with him, wouldn't leave his side. And thank God that your son, you know, is things have turned out well for him. Thank God for that. And your son, shout out to your son. He must be so strong, so mature. That is awesome. But not once that entire time did you seek refuge or an escape with some other woman. You held together. And I get it was tough. But that's no excuse for her. Okay? None. And okay, maybe you, to cope with it, and yeah, it was hard, withdrew, withdrew and it was hard for her. Who knows? But then again, it's like she was always with him anyway. But still, did she, in the 18 years you knew each other, did she come to you and speak to you in words you understand, not hints and innuendos, which a lot of women do. Well, let's be honest. A majority of women out there expect their boyfriend, husband, whatever you want to call them, to be mind readers. And we're not a bunch of Professor Xavier's walking, rolling around our wheelchairs. No. You have to communicate to us. And so her t talking to that guy and obviously some shady shit going on is unacceptable. And just because she went back to the old country and her sisters and mom and everything saw her having coffee with this dude, doesn't mean they could have met at the freaking local hotel down, down the road. And you get my point. And then the deleted pictures and all the other things that were said there, you know, and obviously it sounded like she was planning a new life once your boy got better or something like that. No fucking way. That's not an excuse. Now, obviously, the big question is, you don't want to hurt your boy anymore. He's finally recovered and, and, and is doing well. And I think that's awesome. But how about you? You owe it to yourself to be with someone you can trust. You're never going to trust her after this. Ever. And if you stay or keep the, keep the marriage intact, it's because you're doing it for your boy. Not for you. And here's the big question. If your boy, if you guys, if you guys never had kids, it was just the two of you and some event happened, like maybe her mom got sick or her dad and she did the same thing under those circumstances. If it was just the two of you and you didn't have your son, would you stay together? Probably not. You know, and I get you probably love your boy more than anything in this world and would do anything to protect him and help him. And therefore, that's probably the only real reason you're thinking about keeping her around after all this. Really have to ask yourself, would you do it otherwise if he wasn't here in terms of like, say, you just never had children? And yeah, OK, maybe you were, you were a little closed off and everything that can happen. But again, you didn't, you didn't do that to her, you know, and I want to believe that. Your entire marriage was great. That she really was as great as you thought she was. No red flags and all that. And maybe she was. You know, but a whole year doing this, I just, I, I personally couldn't do it. You know, now on that basis, because of your boy and because she's supposedly been such a great mom and wife up to this point, if you do divorce, at least you can certainly try to do it amicably where, you know, She's going to see him. You're going to be very good with in terms of like the terms of the divorce and also time spent with him and all that. And who knows? But being together now after all this shit, no. But that's just me. But I'm also, I don't know what it's like to be you. I don't know what it's like to have a child, a child that where, where what happened to him and it was probably the worst three years of your life. But let me tell you, sir, those three years of your life that were obviously pure hell. When he was constantly at the hospital and treatment and all that, that showed you what you really made of. You you probably found that you had strength that you never knew you had, and you got through it for your boy. And your wife was trying to be strong for him too, but she wasn't as strong, and look what happened. But that which does not kill us makes us stronger, and I think you're, it's going to really take you to a whole new direction. So I I would say this. At the end of the day, you got to do what's best for you. You can't do what I tell you to do or what the <laughs> thousands of dudes are going to chime away in the comment section are going to tell you to do. You got to do what's best for you. 
regardless of, of that. Okay. And, but I will say this, I wouldn't make a decision today. I would think about it. Look at the big picture and don't do it. What, what you want to do, not what your friends suggest you do, what your mom suggests you do, your brother suggests you do what I said, you do what you need to do, you know, and that's all I think. And again, no matter what, at the end of the day, you know, you have that final choice. And I do wish you the best. So at the very least, take some time to think about this, the whole big picture and all that. And I, th I, I, I truly think and feel in the end, in a calm state of mind, you'll come to the right decision. That's what I think. And so I absolutely wish you the best. And I applaud you for the strength you've had for your family, for your boy, doing what you had to do to take care of him. I'm so happy to hear that he's doing much better and back in school. And I mean, and that kid, I guarantee you, appreciates you like you wouldn't believe. That's awesome. So I'll be thinking about you, man. And no matter what you decide, if you want to write in one day letting me know what's going on, or if you want to write in letting me know what's going on but not have me share it, that's okay too. I'd love to hear from you. So think about this, sir, and I really do wish you the best and, and certainly your boy. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let this guy know what you think. All you guys out there that have been married, been in bad situations, maybe some of you that have kids, maybe some of you had a sick child, something like him, can relate to this, please comment below. It will help him out. There could be 5,000 comments on this video in a month, and I guarantee he'll read every one of them. And every comment helps him out. So even if you take 30 seconds to write something or three minutes to type something, it'll help this guy. Have a sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.